everyone. Um, here we are, it's half past four and as I said earlier today, I'm going to do just a few little minutes on beating the munchies or beating the cravings. Um, I think we're all uh, suffering from a little bit of comfort eating, stress eating at the minute. Um, so it's kind of trying to work towards um, mindful eating and there's so many of you who are playing a blinder right now and this is for anyone who may be just struggling a little bit, whether it's night time, just struggling with getting focused around food, just eating mindlessly, not remembering what you've eaten. Um, so this is hopefully a few tips that you'll find uh, useful. Uh, like that, uh, you may be all busy at this hour of the evening, but this is just happens to be a quiet time in this house, so I've got it all to myself and um, I can just ramble on a little bit about some snacks and um, mindful eating. So there's a couple of different points and I, you know, when, when we're chatting with Will uh, on radio, it's uh, you don't want to get into uh, too much detail. So I suppose um, I'm just kind of trying to expand on that a little bit um, to help deal with, with the munchies. Um, so for those of you, I suppose, who are finding yourselves that you're kind of just at the press at the moment, it's probably a good place to start. So you, most of you have a press in the house um, where you probably have the crisps, where you probably have the chocolate, where you probably have the crisps, the chocolate, the crisp, the chocolate, and so on. And all that kind of bold slash good slash lovely stuff is all in there. Um, and what, what you might find and some of you might agree with me at the moment is you find kind of you're almost an autopilot. So you automatically are going for that press. Um, because you know that's where all the good stuff is. So you're on autopilot. So just to explain that very, very quickly, there is a part of your brain where where um, habits are formed and good habits are formed. And there is a, ha a part of your brain where addiction or cravings uh, is formed. So it's kind of think of that angel devil on your shoulder. There is literally a part in your brain for the angel devil um, on your shoulder. So the first thing, and, and I've recently worked with this um, with a client, I don't know if she's watching, but she might attest to this. So we were chatting on a one-to-one -one consultation last week. And the first thing I said is, if you're finding that you have that press that you're going to all the time, exercise number one over the next few days, change the press. So put all that junk, sugary food, savory food into a completely different press in the kitchen, complete different location, ideally somewhere that's difficult to um, get to, a little bit more difficult, it's not as easy. Um, and replace that original press with things like, maybe you put all your porridge, your breakfast cereals, your pastas, your rices and your thing in that, in that press. So what happens in, and you will do this because I've done it myself, you'll get into the kitchen, you will forget that you've actually put all of the bold stuff in another part of the kitchen and automatically go to the original press. Now, when you open the original press, you're going to see pasta shells, rice, and all these different things. And then you go, oh yeah, I forgot. I changed. So what, what was I going for again? And all of a sudden, you'll, you'll start to trigger, oh, well, I'm actually going to get some chocolate or get some crisps. Um, and at that point, you have the opportunity to ask yourself, okay, am I really just going to this press now uh, to have it? Do I really, really want it? Um, and it just gives you that opportunity to make the decision. But already by the fact that you've acknowledged that the, this original press now does not exist, you're actually breaking that habit cycle. Now, this seems very, very trivial, but this is exactly how our brain works. We love repetitive behavior. We absolutely, the brain loves repetitive behavior. But when it spirals into somewhat of an addiction, like comfort eating, stress eating, or autopilot, that's where we have an opportunity to literally break the chain. So the first things first, if you have that stuff in the house at the minute, so you might be buying it for kids, or you might be just buying, you just might be buying it. Like, let's face it, the trolleys have been a bit weird the last couple of weeks, there's been that much going into it, and then with Easter on top of it. So first things first, try that little um, exercise with the press. If you want to go a step further, you know, even on Operation Transformation last night, they were talking about putting the chocolate in the boot of your car, or it depends on how extreme you are, or it depends on how much you want to break that cycle. Um, for me, 
I do have a secret stash. I always have a secret stash of, of chocolate. For me, I'm a chocolate person. I always have a chocolate stash in the house. So depends on how much I really, really want it. But what I do is I have food processor uh, box with all of my food processor bits. And I literally put it at the bottom of that. Now for me to get through that box, I have to go through all the blades. Uh, so I'm risking getting my fingers cut. Um, but they're, they're nicely stored, but they're all compacted on top of each other and the chocolate is at the bottom. So I know if I really, really want it, I'm going to have to work for it. Um, but nine times out of ten when I do get those cravings, it's kind of like, oh, I know where it is. No, I'm actually, I don't need it. I'm only, I'm only, we call it eating for the crack in our house, just eating for the fun of it. Like, and if you find that you're eating for the fun of it, then just walk away from the press. So just make it difficult for your brain. But each time you do that, you have a little win for yourself because now all of a sudden you're actually being more aware of your behavior and that is the first key to everything whether it's food whether it's unhealthy par uh, patterns in any part of your life once you notice the behavior you've already you're on a winner so if that's just a starting point for you that small win that you need to take in your day then that is brilliant it's a brilliant stepping stone Let's say, for example, you, you go to the press, you, you go to that other press, you, you've, you're bypassing that in your brain and you are having it. Um, have it, you know, absolutely. What I will say to you at that stage, if you are going to have it, rather than take the whole bag of Doritos out or the whole big bar of chocolate, put it onto a plate. So for me, sometimes if I'm, if I'm watching a movie or whatever, I like a bit of sweet and I like a bit of savoury. So it's actually good to get a bowl put whatever you want into a bowl. So you're actually putting a portion out for yourself and away you go. So this might be another tactic rather than bringing in the whole bag or the whole packet of biscuits into the sitting room to watch the movie, put it all out on a plate and then walk away with it. And by all means, 100% enjoy it. At that stage, you've decided you're gonna have it. You've, you've gone to the effort of putting it out on a plate, sit down, guilt-free and enjoy it. Absolutely, there's no guilt here. Um, so that's just another um, tip um, and that's if you have the rubbish in the house and you know you're going to eat it but there are just some little tips there. What I am going to talk about today is kind of replacing 50% of your bad habits with maybe some new ideas so that when you are going for the munchies because let's face it like I have breakfast, lunch and dinner um, I like that they're my main meals but I find I do have some days I have a snack mid-morning, some days, I like today, just before I came on, I was feeling a little pang, so I sat down and had a little snack. So generally two small snacks in a day, and that just, but the main thing, and I suppose the number one point for today, have your meals, make sure you're having your three meals, have your breakfast, have your lunch, and have your dinner. And what we've trained the house to do in the last three weeks is we're having them at the same time, Saturday and Sunday, here or there, uh, but we're certainly having our three meals on Monday to Friday, which we've turned into our new working week. We are having our meals at our same time. And you know, there's a certain, people might look at that and say it's very regimented, but you know, there's a certain, you're managing your day. You, you know, things that are outside here, we can't control what's going on at the moment, but we can certainly manage what's going on within the household. Um, and I think, be very regular with your meals and be very consistent with your meal times. And that's, you know, again, another part of the battle. So we've, we've tackled the regular meal times. The second thing is make sure you're sitting down. So I don't have a chair with me. I've just moved them out of my way so I can move around. Make sure you're sitting down. I know when I uh, work in the salon and, and before I start to train as a health coach, I literally smelt my food and it was gone. I at my lunch at the computer, I at my lunch standing in the salon and um, you know I'd have my lunch gone and I wouldn't even recognize it was gone and you know before I started the course I was developing developing and I've always been a healthy eater but I certainly was developing um, kind of behaviors where I wasn't even noticing mindless eating is what I call it and what, what's termed out there uh, I was certainly getting to that stage so over two years you know my 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 presence when I am eating my food I thoroughly enjoy my food now and I don't have any guilt when I am having the things that are you know more of comfort or the sweet stuff or the savory stuff I'll have it and I'll certainly enjoy it so regular meals we're sitting down and the third thing is no distraction very easy to sit down at the moment and we're watching the news and we're eating and there certainly has been a couple of days here where I find we're eating meals and then we're watching the stats on the tv and 
And that was kind of in the earlier days of all of this. What we've tried to do now is kind of even move the, the meal times by even 10 minutes or so. So we initially get that like initial report, whether it's the six o'clock or one o'clock news, and then we actually sit down and eat. Because if you're sitting and you're watching the news, you look down at your plate and half your food is eaten. Or what happens, and what happens to me is, I start to hear maybe the grim news, like we're getting more grimmer news as the days go on. And then all of a sudden I can feel, oh my God, that poor person or them poor people. And all of a sudden I'm, you know, I'm, you know, you're getting a bit overwhelmed by what's happening and you're trying to digest food at the same time. And it just is this uncomfortable sensation. Uh, so if you've made the effort to sit down, have your lunch or have your dinner, please do it without the distraction of the news. Wait till before or after till you actually can sit and enjoy your food and just digest it in comfort. Um, and that's definitely something that, that I've experienced in the last few weeks. So I, I'm trying to move away from that now as well. I hope you're all finding this um, useful. I'm well passionate about this, as you can probably gather. So I'm, I'm spieling on here like anything. Um, so thumbs up if you're agreeing and feel free to put in some comments there. I can see you're, you're all watching, so thanks very much. Um, so next thing I suppose is, I just have some few points here, is um, your triggers. So learning to recognize what your triggers are. So for some of you, um, your triggers can be maybe you haven't got good night's sleep the night before. And this can be a hard cycle to get out of because you're not sleeping great. You're waking up tired the next day. And I was talking about this to Will. And then all of a sudden you just want the comfort of the carbs. You want the comfort of the sugar. And here we go again in a spiral. So rather than view this that you have to change your whole life, let's just tackle it little bit by little bit. And it all starts with what you're doing in your day. Um, so again, the news can be a trigger. You know, uh, COVID is coming a lot more closer to home at the moment. So and I am conscious of that. So anxiety, stress, worry, if you have a loved one in a nursing home at the moment, if you have a loved one who's ill, if you have a loved one in hospital, there's lots of extra worries out there. Financial worries, paying the bills, paying the mortgage, paying the loans. You know, it's never ending. Um, and sometimes that can trigger you into a case of you're just beside the press, you're at the kitchen sink and all of a sudden you've gone through a packet of biscuits without even knowing it. Um, and again, it's autopilot mode. So it's trying to break that by simply putting it away. If you've had four or five, isn't it better than having 10 or 11, but breaking the pattern and recognizing it. So sleep can be one, stresses, worries, anxiety. Loneliness can be another one. Um, for those of you who are living alone or feel that you don't have the comfort of someone else in a household at the moment, it can be a very challenging time. And I completely understand that. It can be very, very challenging. Um, and especially interacting with the same members of the family every day and different personalities. Um, sometimes that's, di that's difficult when you're having an off day yourself. Um, so sometimes, you know, it's just that sense of isolation or that sense of loneliness can, can bring you to there. Um, we're very fortunate that the weather is a lot brighter. It's a lot better at the moment. So we can actually get outside. And I'm trying to take advantage of that this week by taking 40 minutes and popping out into the garden. I never in a million years thought you'd see me in the garden, but you know what? It's actually taken me away from the sitting room, taken me away outdoors. I generally do my walk in the morning. So I'm just trying to spend half an hour now in the evening times and just finding those just to, to help my head. And it's really good. Um, but I know my triggers. So it's just maybe tuning into what your triggers are. And maybe, you know, you've, you're minding the kids and at the end of the day, maybe you're trying to work and balance the kids as well. I completely understand it. Um, and they can be triggers too. And the last thing you want to do is have the energy to prepare meals. And it's just very easy to snack, even while you're making dinner to snack as well. Um, and then by the time you've made the dinner, all of a sudden you don't want it because you've half a pack of biscuits or a chocolate done. You know, it, it happens. Um, and then finally, the last thing with, with what I'm going to cover next is just the nighttime munchies. So the nighttime munchies just seems to be a big thing for, for all of us. And it's certainly been, uh, it's one of my things, I suppose. I'm very, I'm very well able to keep busy during the day, but there's a certain amount of comfort getting to the evening time when if you've been working from home, you kind of go, yeah, I got my day done, I've had a successful day, I've made it through the day, you know, today wasn't too bad. And now you might have maybe some TV lined up for yourself, you might have, you know, your free time, and you're kind of wondering, oh, well, that's associated with the comfort of sitting down with a cup of tea and 
a biscuit or sitting down with some chocolate or some popcorn or you know and all of a sudden you know as I was saying to Will earlier today Friday is nearly like it's every day you know every day is a Saturday every day is a Friday um, and that comes again with you know building on from this and trying to have maybe your Monday to Friday as a certain feel in the house and a Saturday and Sunday a certain feel in the house and that means for me you know I have my few drinks on a Saturday night but I still have that anticipation or that looking forward to having my few drinks as opposed to me the novelty of having you know for me a drink every every night um so I kind of like to keep things for a Saturday and Sunday that I can look forward to I know on Sunday morning we kind of have a mini healthy fry up here we sit along the table we have a chat and we read the newspapers and that's something we've continued even while we are you know um in our own homes and not really allowed to, to do a whole lot um, so again they're just different things you know and it's a it's a building process that might you know just just hold a little bit back for your weekend so after the working week and that will kind of just help you get through Monday Tuesday Wednesday so every day is not Friday 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 if that makes sense so um, anyways I hope that all makes sense um, briefly what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just do some snacks you know um, we had a text this morning um, on the radio you know, and the, the comment was something along the lines of, of, of healthy snacks equals, you know, lettuce leaves and rabbit food. I can guarantee you on the table in front of me, there is not one lettuce leaf. And I certainly won't be promoting um, eating rabbit food as a, a coping mechanism during this time. But I certainly am promoting variety. I think if you're finding you're having the same breakfast, same lunch, same dinner, and you're not excited about it, you need to change it up a bit. Um, and there's certainly a lot of easy things you can do to change it up a bit. Um, the more variety you can have into your diet these days, the actual less um, craving you will have for certain uh, foods. And that's because if you're doing that, you're actually satisfying what the body needs, whether it's a zinc need, whether that's a magnesium need. And these are all things that if they're out of sync, they can exacerbate the cravings. So variety is the absolute key. And I'm also very, very keen on splashes of taste. So adding in that taste into your meals. So it's not just a bland potato, meat and veg, but you have a nice sauce there. You maybe have some hummus, you have some mustard. You have something that you like to splash it up a bit. No more than that when it comes to the sweet things. Okay, so first snack, um, I have two hand. Um, this is something kind of I make up. Um, again, my hands. So I, in my shopping at the moment, I get cherry tomatoes, I get the small little mozzarella balls and I get some olives. And again, for me, it's about color. I need to be excited about what I'm gonna eat. I need to make sure there's color on my plate. Um, and I mean, there's something like having cocktail sticks, just your mozzarella, um, your tomato and your um, olive. Now I have all these done out, I can put the calories on beside, um, but there's certain snacks I'll have for, you know, 100 calories or so, 200 calories or so, or 300 calories or so. Um, again, let's not beat ourselves up about the calorie watching. Um, if you're moving into some of these snacks, you're already doing your body a huge favor. So don't worry about the scales, don't worry about the calories, Focus on just getting some more new tastes, more wholesome tastes, and your body will actually thank you for it. So again, I just love the colour, and I am a big fan of Italy. We travel to Italy a lot, uh, and I just call this my ode to Italy. And um, It's great, particularly if you're making the dinner and you know you're not going to make it through without having a nibble of something. I usually have something like this beside me, so I can just have one or two of these and... I, I'm not you know, going to binge through my dinner or overeat completely. Um, so these are really, really handy. And I hope you love the colours of those because I do. They, they make me laugh. Um, okay, so I'm sticking with the savoury stuff. And again, um, this is so important because you have that protein there. Protein is very, very good in the diet because it stops you spiking. So if you find you're getting a, a lot of carbs in your diet, a lot of bread, What's going to be happening is you're going to get the high with that energy release and then you're going to get the slump or the tiredness. So the high, low and high and low. So try to add some protein in with your carbs or some protein in a part of the day and that will help regulate or balance out your sugar levels. Um, just another, I um, like to prepare some of these uh, maybe twice a week just in the evening times for the next day. So usually after I finish my dinner I'm trying to prep one or two things for the next day because they're in the fridge, they're ready to go. And again, it reduces the, 
the habit of just picking. So preparation is key. I could do a whole other spiel on preparation, but prep is the absolute key. So um, these are a couple of hard boiled eggs. I put them on last night. We usually have some tea around six o'clock. So I just thought like this evening we're tending to go for more salady stuff now, just some light stuff because it's been so warm. And um, again, the eggs are a great source of protein. You can add them in with cheese. They're a great filler, you know, some meat, put it in a wrap. Um, we've homemade brown bread thanks to my mother and um, you know things like that that just make it a full out meal um, so they're handy and they're done in you know bring it to the boil do them for nine minutes or whatever way you like your eggs uh, I don't need to tell you how to cook eggs so that's another good one and um, let me see where will I go to next okay so let's say for example we get to Friday night Saturday night you've planned to watch the movie I know this Saturday night on RT half six we're all excited about Moana can't wait we're so excited <laughs> so I know and, and this is where I start to plan because I know I'm going to want to have a drink I know I'm going to want to have some savory stuff so that means I'm going to try and be good between Monday and Friday and I'm going to relax I'm going to have my chocolate I'm going to have my popcorn and I'm going to enjoy it Saturday night without any guilt and I'm going to enjoy it in my movie so I'm just planning in my head what way my day is going to go you know and just little things like that one of the things I love let's say for example you want a savory snack and something to take the the curb off the hunger this is really really good um hi Anya I hope you're finding this useful um these are chickpeas now I love chickpeas I love hummus I love everything to do with chickpeas absolutely they're the best thing I ever discovered and I discovered these years ago when I was living away and they're amazing 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 um so all we do is this we get, just get a tin of chickpeas you basically drain them off in a bowl I added last night I added this is just the tin drained I added two teaspoons of olive oil mixed it around the chickpeas and then if you like your that kind of Indian curry flavor that kind of snack you know particularly if you like your crisps or that kind of um, taste what I did is I got some curry powder this is just what I have in the press I love cumin it's got some cumin and um, got some turmeric and this is another one you can use separate paprika if you don't want to put all the flavors in one but if you would if you want that kind of Indian kind of taste or that flavor that curry flavor sprinkle over the cumin and some curry powder and this is a medium one then I literally toasted roasted them in the oven on a baking tray for about I started with 20 minutes and then I added on a five minutes until I got them just crispy enough so if they're still kind of soft you haven't toasted them enough so they should get to the point where they're actually nice and crunchy um, and I could prepare them so let's say I know I'm going to sit down on Saturday night and it's my night or whatever you want to call it or Friday night I might make them after my lunch earlier in the day or in the morning and I literally have them ready to go because they're a little bit nice when they're colder and this is just a great snack number two it's an actual protein as well it's a complete protein so it's really really good because you get that sense of satisfaction or what we call satiety afterwards so you actually don't need to eat a whole lot of these to get that feeling and when it comes to eating things that are in like this put it in a small bowl for yourself take a break every few minutes and when you feel that kicking into your stomach you'll know that you're you're full sometimes what we find when we're mindlessly eating is we're eating so much that we're actually not allowing our brain to register that we're actually full which means we keep on eating and then about half an hour later and probably a lot of you will know this you'll suddenly get this wave of almost really over full and it's actually then only a half an hour later that the brain is registering you've allowed the brain to register that you're full when you really were probably full an hour ago um, so again it's just maybe slowing down a little bit and finding that way with yourself to, to enjoy those but that's a really good one if you like the savoury um, next what do I have okay so we all love the popcorn this is just some popcorn I had in the presses so it's the Kalkin and it was the 50% less fat and then um, this is Manhattan popcorn kernels that we have as well um, big fan of popcorn in the house it's it's a great it's a healthy snack it's a nutritious snack very very good if you like the kind of savory snack but also great to kind of mess around with so last night I did uh, one of these bags in the microwave so literally two three minutes you know the, the story and literally what I did is I now there's one bag missing so <laughs> we had to do a taste test last night so literally divided um, into three bags so 
30 grams of popcorn in each bag. Then I added 30 grams of mixed nuts. So mixed nuts a variety that you like. Uh, chop them up and add them into the bag. Now, and finally then for me, I added, I'm a devil. I love sweet and I love the savory together. So I added in, generally a portion of chocolate is about two squares. So I added in two squares. I love my dark chocolate. I added in two squares of my, I can see all the likes going on. Like, yes, she's promoting chocolate. Thank God. Um, two squares of this. I literally just chopped it up and added it into my bag. Um, and this is kind of, I call this my, my weaponry, my armory. I might not need this on Friday or Saturday, but I might get to Sunday or Monday and all of a sudden I realise, oh my God, I have some prepared and it's there. So again, it's just handy to have a couple of bags of these made up. I just bought some self seal bags in Dunn stores and put them together. If you don't like nuts or chocolate, you know, just have, have the 30 grams of popcorn. Now let's be fair, if I had that in a big bowl, I'd probably eat the whole lot. But again, this is just to help you with training yourself into portion size. So, you know, if that means you're eating popcorn instead of eating, I don't know, uh, maybe crisps or whatever, or eating crisps, chocolate and popcorn, you know, if this helps, find your feet with it. But it's a great way for mixing the sweet and the savoury. And again, these are 30 grams of popcorn, uh, 30 grams of nuts and uh, two squares of dark chocolate all chopped up. Have them, enjoy them. And you'll be really satisfied after. I add a sprinkle of sea salt in just at the end just to make it extra salty and chocolatey all together. Anyways, just a tip. Uh, so that's that one. Um, okay, yes. This is a great one. I use this for, I, I've now uh, done this for three weeks in a row and I call this the during the week dessert. I've come up with this. It's 105 calories. Again, don't get too upset with the calories or anything like that, but it's, it's just, it's a low calorie one. Um, so again, you could keep maybe something, you know, keep the other stuff for your Saturday and Sunday. But for during the week, this is just a nice splash of sweetness. Um, so this is my dessert in a glass. You may have seen me putting this up on my Instagram and Facebook pages. Um, it's so easy to make and it's great to get the kids involved with this as well. It's so, so easy. Uh, last night was, I usually have one or two nights in the week and I spend maybe an hour and I'm just prepping and doing stuff for the week. That's what just keeps me occupied at the minute and I have no problem doing it. So I literally have six glasses um, and because three of us in the house, so uh, six glasses, so we get two, two days of dessert each. Um, I use the sugar-free jelly and for this I make up two, um, use two sachets and I think it's working out about six or seven hundred mils of um, fluid. So basically it works, yeah, it works out about that. Um, but I use the two sachets and then I just have the custard powder here. This was in the press for a while and it's now getting the best use of its life. Um, and then finally then I make some, I have some cooking apples. So I stew some cooking apples. Um, I actually forgot cooking apples yesterday doing my shopping even though I had my shopping list. So I just had some blueberries and some blackberries fresh. So I stewed whatever apples we'd left over, mix them all in. So I prepare my jelly the night before I prepare my custard the night before and I prefer, prepare my stewed fruit the night before. Um, I pour the, the divide the jelly mixture between the six glasses and leave overnight then to set. So this morning, let's say I got up and what I did was I spooned then in the uh, stewed fruit here. I have the custard and I have a Muller light yogurt then divided between the um, six glasses and I put that up in my links afterwards. And then to top it all off, I just have the mini treat size flakes and I literally have it all crumbled up and I crumble it up over the six glasses. It's a really good way and this kind of one is very good because you get to have a little bit of chocolate, you get to a little bit of fruit, a little bit of jelly. It's a very sweet one um, and but, but for only a small amount of calories because again you're having it in a glass or more of a portion size. And it's something you can enjoy, whether it's after your midday meal or after your evening meal. And it's something that we look forward to during the week. It's the little things that we have. So that's a really, really good one that I find useful. Um, some other things that I kind of have in the house, just as my backup. These are dried uh, figs. Um, I'm also a big fan of dried dates. Now, like anything, dried food has or dried fruits, I should say, have a very high content of sugar. So when it comes to having dates and when it comes to having figs, you're trying to limit yourself to two. 
and I know you're probably going to laugh, I like I could certainly have way more than that, but you'll get a very, very high sugar rush after that. Um, and it, it, it is loaded with sugar, the dried fruits. So I enjoy these. I tend to maybe, if I'm doing a dessert in a glass, I kind of break them up. So I'm having them with something. So I'm getting that hit of sweetness in a dessert or in, an, in a meal form, if that makes sense, as opposed to just taking these out on their own. There's certainly though been days where it's coming up to dinner and I know my sugar is low and I'll probably have two of these just again, keep me going. These are absolutely fantastic. So figs or, or dates are brilliant and you can get them, I get them in Duns. It's just where I do my shopping. I'm sure you'll pick them up anywhere as well. Um, What else was I going to say? So that's the dates and the figs. And again, coming back to the popcorn, if you don't want the chocolate or if you have only dates or figs, chop up one or two and put that in with your mix then as well. So if you like the sweet and savoury in your in your popcorn. Uh, what else? Da, 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 da. Oh yes, meringue nests. Big fan of these guys. They're really handy to pick up. Um, again, they're a small portion, but you will get a good sugar hit off of that. Um, so again, that's handy with your um, yogurt and your fruit and make it up and just sit, have it in a nice bowl, present it really well and sit down and enjoy it in the evening time. And that will certainly go a long way into, cur into curbing your sugar craving. And um, the thing about when you're having them as well, sit and enjoy them, sit and enjoy them. Don't have them standing up and have them eaten before you can even enjoy them. Make sure you have some time that you want to sit down and just savour them and enjoy them. And then this is all more about mindful eating. Um, again, I don't want to go into too much in the mindful eating and the breathing and the, the chewing and things like that. I think I'm trying to just focus on things that we all need right now that we can incorporate every day and build on from here. Um, lastly, just before I came on, I had to kind of sit down myself and just have I had some leftover custard and I wanted to test this out. Um, this is some homemade granola. Um, again, this is a five minute granola and it's from the Happy Pear uh, guys. Um, I'm a really big fan of them, always have been. Um, this is just something I made up really, really quickly. Now, again, I'll probably put a separate post. I'm not going to go into a big spiel of how I made it. It's very, very easy. You can have it prepared in less than 10 minutes between weighing out your options and, and putting it together. The thing with the granola is um, I put it in the freezer. I have it there maybe on a Sunday when I have some stewed fruit um, or when I'm having some ice cream and you just want that kind of nutty kind of texture on top. Um, have this with your breakfast sprinkled over your cereal. Have it just with the yogurt and some fruit. Um, have it during the day. Um, I just needed something there before I came on around four o'clock to keep me going. So I had it just with some custard I'd left over uh, from this morning. Have it with some fruit. It's just amazing. And literally you've got no grains in here. So it's mixed nuts, mixed seeds. Uh, I have some goji berries. I have some cacao nibs just for that chocolatey taste. Some vanilla essence maple syrup and coconut oil. Again, I'll put the recipe up for this separate. Um, you can make granola with some oat flakes, but this is just a grain free one. Um, really, really lovely. And the smell it leaves in the kitchen is unbelievable. Um, and these are all ingredients that you can easily pick up. Um, okay, so I think I'm kind of done. Um, I hope I've probably bombarded you with so much information. Please give me a thumbs up if that all makes sense. And you maybe pick one or two little things out of that. Um, the last thing I will say is keep all the, the, the stuff that is not so good, so the stuff that you're trying, the temptation, keep that out of sign as a rule, out of sight as a rule of thumb. Um, keep your healthy stuff more visible in the kitchen. So the likes of your pineapples, the likes of your fruit bowl, and um, keep them visible in the kitchen and keep the temptation stuff out of sight, out of mind. Um, one more final thing and I'll finish on this is if you know you're going to have a day or you're, you're just trying to get used to this not um, eating mindlessly or endlessly I always say have something prepared so have something have your armor set up for your press so we've gone through some things today to have your press whatever you need in there your popcorn your dark chocolate your nuts and um, your figs your dates things like that have that armory set up for yourself in the kitchen have something set up for yourself in the fridge. So you might want something like these guys or something set up in the fridge for yourself, especially when you go picking during the day. 
Um, so I find that really handy. Um, I know I love my hummus, so I do. And again, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> I I swore I wouldn't mention rabbit food, but I do like my carrots and my hummus, and I find they're handy during the day. So I have something pre prepared in the fridge. And like I was saying to Will earlier, I have stuff in the freezer too. So I have frozen, I have my ice lollies in there, I have my chalk ices in there, um, I have some frozen chocolate in there. Um, so have something in your press, have something in your fridge, and have something in your freezer. So uh, it will help you, help you uh, start on the path to beating the munchies. It's not something you're going to do overnight, it's something that you will work on. You will fall off the ladder and off the bandwagon, and if you do, it's just about how quick you pick yourself back up and it's, it's, it's work. But you know what, we've got time on our hands and as I said to Will today, you know, it's very easy to be positive or come across as being positive all the time. But being positive is, is work, you know, and I certainly understand there are days when you just could not be bothered or as I said to Will earlier today, that you just go, what is this all for? And on those days, remember that you have people who rely on you. So if you're not feeling it yourself on that particular day, remember that there are people or there is someone who is relying on you. Um, so if on those days you're not doing it for yourself, do it for someone else. Um, and it will help yourself be mentally stronger and more resilient to all of this BS that's going on in the world right now and all the poor people that are suffering. Um, but again, we, we have to choose our, our mindset uh, and deal, be able to be strong to deal with the challenges that are ahead. So I hope you have enjoyed this, um, uh, I'm gonna say short Facebook Live, but it's not really been a short one. Um, I really enjoyed doing this. I'm really, really passionate about it. If you want to do more, I have a mindful eating online class on Tuesday at 7.30 and all my details are on the website and signups. Um, and I will be doing, of course, some more of these nutrition pieces um, as we go along the next few weeks. So uh, I hope I've given you a lot of food for thought there um, to start tackling those munchies and to enjoy those munchies when you set the time for them as well, guilt free. So have a great evening and enjoy the lovely sunshine and I will talk to you soon and thanks so much for supporting me. Bye.